Welcome to the bonus lesson. I'm going to walk you through the steps of converting our test Stripe integration so that it works when we deploy to live. The first thing we're going to do is copy our products to live mode in Stripe because it's currently in test mode. So that is our starter growth and yearly plan. After that, we are going to grab the pricing IDs from these new live products, insert them into our plan option set and bubble. We'll also grab our live secret key from Stripe to insert into the bubble API connector. We also need to copy across our webhooks, which currently have a version test in the URL to the live environment in Stripe and Stripe has a handy one click shortcut for this. We'll then do a quick walk around our bubble app just to make sure we have no hard coded version test URLs affecting any workflows. We also need to make sure that our customer portal link works in the live environment. And for that, Stripe provides both the test, which we've been using and a live link. So we need to activate the live link. Then after that, you'll be ready to deploy to live and test a live transaction. Okay, so we in Stripe, we've got our test mode toggled. I'm gonna head over to my product catalog. And here are the three products we need to copy to live. This is quite straightforward. Start at the top here. Click on this more button and then it says copy to live mode. Off we go. Okay, let's do the next one. Copy to live mode. And again, copy to live mode. Okay, now that we've done that, let's toggle across to live mode and we can see our three products here. If I click into the starter plan, we can see we have multiple plans. I'm just gonna demonstrate this one for the default. So we can copy the price ID. Let's jump into bubble. Head across to our option set and we've got our plan and our starter plan. I'm going to modify attributes and then simply paste it in. Okay, I'm going to do the same for the other plans. Grab my price ID, back into bubble, growth plan, modify attributes, paste into the ID price live. Lastly, I'm gonna grab my yearly plan copy price ID, back into bubble, modify attributes and paste. Okay, that's done. Now I'm gonna grab my live secret key from Stripe to insert into bubble. So we're still in live mode. We can just go back home where our shortcuts exist and we have our secret key. Okay, it's asking for verification. Here it is here, copy. And let's head over to the plugins API connector. And the first thing we're going to do is type bearer space and then paste in that key. Okay, at the end of this tutorial, you won't be able to see my private key just for safety purposes. All right, back into Stripe. Okay, I'm gonna head over to developers and webhooks and I'm in live mode, okay, this is live mode. And we can see that Stripe has detected that in test mode, we have four webhooks, super convenient. So I'm gonna click import four We select all of them, click next. And here is our opportunity to change between test and live. So what I tend to do is just remove version test. And I just leave my app ID as the domain. That'll actually work, that's just fine. If you want to paste in your custom domain, yourdomain.com forward slash API, you can do that as well but I just, sent, I just tend to leave it as is because it works. 
Okay, so I'm just going to remove version test. I've not deployed this to live. I don't have a domain. So I'm just going to move version test. Import those. Okay, there they are there. Now something I wanted to point out is that in the backend workflows, I've had quite a few questions about this. You don't need to reinitialize these particular calls, okay? So remember when we said detect data, remember this step, we don't need to redo this. This is just done once in test mode. In fact, this won't even work. If you had to click detect data when, you, when your app is in live and not in test, you would basically just see the results, at which point you can actually change some options, but that's not necessary. Okay, so you initialize in test mode with the initialization appended at the end. Once it's initialized correctly, then Bubble understands the data structure, and that's the purpose of detecting data. So there's nothing else you need to do to get live webhooks up and running. Okay, next, let's grab our customer portal live link. So back to Stripe, close this window, and I'm going to type portal for customer portal. And we currently in live mode, okay, so I'm going to activate link. And there we go, there's our live link. So we can go ahead and copy this, and paste it into bubble on the account page. So let's go to account. And we're looking for the button basically. So have a look at our buttons here. So button, no, it's a link. Sorry, it's a link, of course it's a link. Link managed plan, that's the one we're looking for. Okay, so it looks like we have some logic here to, to determine which link to use. So isn't live version formatted as text. So isn't live version is yes, means it's the test version. I can see that the test link is in there. And I'm gonna paste the live link in here. All right, so this just retains the ability to use both test mode and live mode without hard coding either or. But you could just hard code your live link if you wanted to. Because once you've tested it and it works, well, it works. Okay, so it's at this stage that we are ready just to do a quick walk around the app to make sure we haven't hard coded any version test URLs or any logic that points to version test. So I'm first gonna start on my pricing plan I might get started. And we have our checkout session. Okay, let's have a look. So we have another isn't live version is yes piece of logic here. Let's just have a look. So for the test version, it's the price test. For the live version, it's the price live. Perfect. We have this URL, which obviously if you're in production live mode, then it's pulling the live URL. So this is the reason why I wanted to expose these options as editable values from the API connector in previous lessons. And that is a dynamic URL being generated. That's fine. So that looks good. Let's have a look on the account page. I'm just clicking through and I'm just looking for any hard-coded values, okay? I actually know <laughs> if there are any, but I just wanted to walk you through the process that I tend to use because when you've been developing over the course of a few weeks or months, it's just very good practice to keep doing this, making sure that you fully understand what all of your workflows are doing and looking for any hard-coded values. Okay, we're good there on the auth. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just on this auth page, sorry, not on the auth page, on the account page, I'm just gonna expose the right hand plan group. Okay. Let's have a look here. Okay, that's all fine, that's all fine. If I click the cancel button, that shows a cancel pop-up. I'm gonna have a quick look here. So if we go ahead and click the cancel button, we looked at this earlier. So this is 
from the API connector, which we need to have a look at as well. Current users, subscriptions, ID subscription, all fine. And we do have a repeating group in here, and let's just look at the data source for that. That is for the invoices. And if I select first parent, search for payments, sometimes these constraint keys will have hard-coded data. It looks like we're okay there. And on the download, this is a destination URL. Nothing around version test. Lastly, let's have a quick look at our backend workflows. So we're creating a new subscription. So it looks like we have a filter here, all right? Let's see, request data, body objects, metadata, is this plans display? That looks okay. And when we search for users, that's fine. Let's have a look at this one. I'm sure we'll come across some hard coding here. The plan, this plans display, that's fine. Search for users, that's okay. Yep, that's fine. All right, the invoice one. Okay, so here is our first hard-coded piece of logic. All right, I've tested that these work. I probably won't come back here again in test mode, so I'm simply going to hard-code this to price live. You can use is, isn't live version as is yes logic here if you'd like, but I know that this is not something I'm going to be testing in live again. But you have that option, okay? Isn't live version as is yes gives you the option for either test or live depending on if you are working in your test environment or your live environment. But I'm just going to hard code that back to live. All good. Okay, let's try this one here. And lastly, this one here. Nope, looking good. Trigger update plan, anything hard coded it might be down here. Result of step one's plan IDs price test. Okay, so we're going to change ID price test to ID price live. And then updating a plan, anything we need to think about here. Yep, so we've got another price test, change that to price live. And last little piece to look at. And it looks like we're fine. Okay, guys, and it's at this point that you can now go ahead and you can deploy your app, okay? The first thing you need to do after deploying is to actually test these transactions. So this is how I test transactions. I would go to look for my coupon section, okay? Coupons, because maybe you don't want to spend too much money, maybe your cheapest plan is a thousand bucks, who knows? But anyway, if you, don't want to, um, if you want to do lots of testing, go ahead and create yourself a coupon. Okay, so this is, I'd say testing. And give me 99% off with this particular coupon code. I'm not gonna go through all of these coupons, but have a look, you can apply coupons to specific products. But down here we have use customer facing coupon codes. So I'll toggle that to yes. And I'll call that test 99. Actually, let me do all caps, it's better to make sure people don't make mistakes here. Okay, you have all of these options down here, which I'm not gonna get into, but go ahead and create that coupon code. So now at customer checkout, you can apply the testing coupon code. So to enable the use of coupon codes, we do need to make just one quick addition to our API connector integration. So head over to your plugins, API connector, and for the checkout session, what we need to do is add a parameter and type in allow underscore promotion underscore codes. We just need to set that to true, okay? 
and make sure it's a query string. This can be private as well. And that just enables a little coupon box, a little coupon input in the left-hand pane where a user can apply a promotional code. Okay, you can go ahead and reinitialize that. I can't, re I can't do it right now because I've actually deleted my API key, but that won't be a problem. You can go ahead and just reinitialize quickly. Okay guys, so yeah, after you deploy, go ahead, do some live testing. I just wanted to quickly walk you through some troubleshooting steps. If you're not getting your webhook data in the live environment. So the first thing you need to actually do is just make sure that when you're in live, that you can see some actual transactions, okay? I'm just gonna go across to test mode quickly to show you some actual transactions. We've just gone through this in the course. That's the first thing you need to do, make sure transactions are happening. If I click on subscription update, this one up here, Stripe gives me, or well, tells me everything that's been happening on the server. So if I scroll down to events and logs, I can see that the invoice.finalized webhook was sent. So you need to make sure that these webhooks were fired. If they weren't, then you know it's a problem with the webhook. Okay, let's go inspect the event detail and workbench. If I scroll down on the right hand side, I can see more information here. Okay. You have all the information you need, the logs, the events. So make sure that that did happen. If I click across to events, this, this is slightly cleaner than I guess than the inspector. So customer subscription deleted, I have a 200 code here, okay. So this will give you a good indication of if it does fail, the reason for that. And I can see that the URL it tried to send this webhook to. Make sure that that URL is correct and you can resend without having to do another payment within Bubble. Now, if it couldn't deliver this webhook, well, this will end up being failed and then you know you need to have another look at this URL to make sure that that information is correct. Okay, guys, well, I hope that was really useful. So go ahead, follow the steps, deploy your app, make sure you test with the coupon code Make sure all the data is coming down and re-watch this lesson again if you're still struggling. All the best.